My name is Deb Pro, and I am the president of Pro Marketing. We're an independent management and marketing firm. Uh, we had the uh, pleasure of tallying up the NAEP salary survey for 2008, and I'd like to review uh, the survey for you now and how to use it to your advantage. We go on to page one, and you'll see that uh, the survey was emailed out to all the NAEP members. A total of 690 responses was received, which is about a 50% return. And listed there, you'll see the various variables that were included in the study. So in addition to the salary levels, uh, we also tallied the years of experience, both in procurement and educational procurement, the title, age, gender, certifications, the type and size of institution, and the geographic region uh, that the respondent or member resides in. If we go to page two, this will give you an overview of how the data is presented. Now the key segments uh, that generally we look at in NAAP is type of school, either public or private, the size of school, smaller versus larger schools, and gender, males versus females. So you'll see there that in essence we have developed eight lookup tables using those segmentation criteria. You will be able to see both females and males for smaller private colleges and larger private colleges with the criteria of less than and more than 5,000 students, as well as tables for males and subsequently females for public colleges and universities, again, by larger and smaller, with the criteria there being more than 10,000 students or less than 10,000 students. So for each of these eight lookup tables, then you will be able to go in and look at the salary ranges by the other variables that I mentioned before and that are listed here. Years in procurement and educational procurement, the title, age, certifications, and regions. And we'll go on to page three, and I'd like to review for you how the table or each table is organized. First, the data in the table is presented as a percentage by row. And the N or number in parentheses after each of the various segments is the base number of members or respondents that the percentages are based on. So when I say percentage by row, that means that the percentages will add up to 100 going across, and you read the data, in essence, with the base being that variable that is at the end of the left-hand column. So on page three, you will see that the lookup table is females in public institutions with more than 10,000 students. So then if you go down to years in procurement, let's say that you have been in procurement for four years or less, and you're interested in what the salary ranges are for females in a public institution with less than 10,000 students who have been in procurement for four years or less. Well, you'll see that 10 members met that criteria and as you move across the row, it's read in this way. 80% of females who work in a public institution with greater than 10,000 students and have been working in procurement for four years or less have a salary range of less than 50,000. 10% of that same segment has a salary range of 50 to 60,000, and 10% has a salary range uh, of 70 to 80,000. Now, if there's no data or zeros, that means that there was no data in that particular salary range. So you can go down the page and find yourself, in essence. Let's say you're a female in a public institution with more than 10,000 uh, students, and you're a management supervisor. You will go down under title and find that there were 22 individuals meeting that criteria. And again, you will read across the row. 14% of that criteria uh, had income levels or salary levels of less than 50,000, 32%, 50 to 60,000, 32%, 60 to 70,000, and on the rest of the row. So you can go through to each of these eight lookup tables and in essence find yourself, whether it's by um, years of procurement, years in educational procurement, 
the title, um, the age, the certifications, and the region. We hope that you will find this information valuable to better understand the salary distributions in your industry. Thank you.